Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Monday. Sorry I missed last week. I was out of town on a business trip and then took a day to uh, do a little bit of vacation with my family and was not able to make it. But this is Marketing Monday's episode number 51. Let me take a second just to ping some of the groups in and I will uh, get going. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys are Looking forward to having a great week this week and um, that this show can be part of that. So give me one second. Let me just go ahead and get everybody else pinged in here and we will get going. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in and thank you for uh, all the positive comments and the questions that have come in. Again, I apologize for last week being out. Um, I, again, wanted to focus on being away with my family and being away at the industry event and just didn't want to uh, have the ability to take the time to get away to do a marketing Monday. So I am almost done here. So I apologize, but uh, we will be ready in one second. There we go. Okay. Thank you, everybody for joining. Hopefully you guys have uh, had a great weekend, a relaxing weekend and are ready to hit the, the week strong. I've got a great show ready for you today. A lot of great questions. But as always, if you're live here, you can always put a question in the comments and I will do my best to answer those live while we're on the air. So we got a 30 minute show. I got plenty of questions here, but go ahead and uh, and put in um, any questions you may have and we will go from there and get going. So first question uh, is, I've been writing uh, project blogs and, and posting to social for a while now, but things have started to stagnate. What do I do to get things going again? So let's go ahead and jump into that. So it, they, they talk about writing project blogs and posting to social. It's really important, though, that you know activity is important. There's no question about that, but it's got to be the right activity. It can't just be any activity. So if you're writing project blogs, uh, you know don't get trap, don't get caught in the trap of doing the same thing time and time again. You know, kind of writing the same format, the same flow, everything kind of feels the same because that'll start getting boring. You want to change it up a little bit. You also want to be obviously the idea of writing project blogs and putting those on your website primarily is for SEO to try to get more traffic to your website via organic SEO traffic. And it also, when people come to your website, it's a way to showcase your work. So again, don't first of all, don't get trapped in using the same format because that may not be good for from an SEO standpoint because you're you're getting caught up doing the same thing all the time. Secondly, start asking yourself what about your project blogs you can utilize to to think of the project blogs as a way to fill in the gaps of your website. So if you're working on a particular car or you're working on a home or you're working on something about that project is specific, the city that you're doing the project in, include that in the title, include that in, in a lot of the, the blog material, where you're doing the work, things like that. That's going to be all pieces that can help fill out the, the gaps in your SEO because your SEO, you're not going to probably have every like city that you maybe do work in or different types of cars you maybe work on or things like that. But by creating the projects, you can include different things. Like let's say you do a lot of work on Teslas and you're posting about Teslas. Now there's different types of Teslas, the Model X, the Model 3, the Model Y, the Model S. So don't just get caught up and talk about a Tesla, but talk about the specific model. If it's a, if it's a Tesla Model X Plaid, say it's a Tesla Model X Plaid. That way, when people are looking for particular content, about work being done to a Tesla Model X Plaid, your website is probably going to be one of the few websites out there that has specific content talking about that particular model of car, which is going to help you get more organic traffic. It's going to help you elevate in those searches because not a lot of websites are going to have specific content. Same thing with cities. If you include the city in the title of the work that you're doing, there's a lot of websites that are going to have generic content, not generic, but generalized content about different types of work that they do, but not about different individual cities. So if somebody in that city is looking for particular work and they include that city name, that's really going to help your website come up to the top of those search engines versus others 
because your website's going to have a piece of content that talks about that work being done in that particular city. And not a lot of other websites are going to have that. So if you're going to write regular blogs and things like that, make sure you're including some unique pieces of content, whether it's the type of car, whether it's the city, um, whatever the case may be, you want to include some specific types of content in there so that it's going to help your SEO content. It's going to fill in the gaps of your website. Most websites are done in a more generalized way, which is fine. That's, you know, you want to be a little bit more general for your main area, but the blogs give you an ability to be very specific about models of cars, locations, things like that. Use that to your advantage to help fill in those gaps to your website. And I think you're going to see that those blogs start to pay bigger dividends long term. Second thing they talk about is they've been posting to social. Again, same thing. Don't get caught in the trap of kind of posting the same type of post over and over and over again. Change it up a little bit. You know, try to do some videos. If you don't typically do videos, add some of those in there. Try to come up with different types of content. Maybe one time it's a picture. Maybe one time it's sharing an article. Don't always go for the big thing too. Don't always go for the right hook. Don't only post when you're asking somebody for something like, hey, you know, schedule this work or buy this item. You want to post so that people like when they're watching your feed, it's like you're communicating with people. If somebody walks into your store or walks into your shop, you don't immediately go to like trying to sell them something right out of the gate without even having any sort of conversation. Think of your social media is the same way. It's your company having a conversation with the people that are visiting your site. It can't always be asking for the sale, asking for the sale. That's a boring conversation. It's one most people are going to check out on right away. I mean, nobody wants to be in a situation where they feel like, just go to a used car dealer. You'll feel like what it feels like to be asked for the sale time and time again. Most people don't like it. If your social media feels the same way that the only time you post is when you're asking for a sale or asking to make a sale, it's going to feel the same way. It's going to feel like there's pressure. It's not going to be enjoyable. Try to think about your social media as a conversation with your audience. Not, It's not all the same. You may share some things where you're asking for the sale, but mix that up with some where you're showing them a part of your work. You're showing them maybe some back scenes type thing about your business. Maybe you're sharing something about some employees of your staff. Maybe you're sharing just a general information or entertainment type of article about the community that you live in. Have a conversation and all the elements of those conversations, the same way you would talk to somebody on the street, are not going to all be about selling somebody something. It's going to be a wide variety of things. Try to make your social media mimic that so that people feel like they're having a conversation with your company. It's not a one-way conversation where you're just trying to push something. Um, um, so basically, that's hopefully that was a really long-winded way of answering the question that people are writing about projects and they're writing about on social media, but they feel like their their impact is stagnating. Maybe try to just put it, check yourself to make sure you haven't fallen into one of those traps or falling into one of those patterns. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks for all the comments. Good to see everybody in here. David, Christy, Robert, Dom, Ty, Steve, David. Thank you guys, Joshua, Marcelo. Always good to have you guys in here. As always, if you guys have any questions or clarifications on what I'm talking about, please put them in the comments and I will make a point to get to them. I see the comments right next to my screen. So if you guys put something in, it comes right up for uh, so, uh, for me to be able to answer. So with that being said, one of the things that's come up actually a couple times in the last week, I had several clients send me uh, text about this and I had to answer it. And then lo and behold, when I got back to the shop uh, this week, I had the same thing. So I'm going to talk about this really quickly. And you guys may have gotten something like this in the mail. It's a domain registration thing. Uh, and let me just talk a little bit about these because these are 90% of the time, these are going to be spam. And I'm not picking on this particular company, but there's a couple different companies that do this. You'll see that they talk about, you know, you need to renew your domain and uh, you need to validate it, da, 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 da. Cost is typically around $300, over $200, something like that. Here's the thing. You should know where your domains are registered. I particularly use a company by the name of Namecheap, but a lot of other people use GoDaddy or a variety of other uh, companies to register your domain. 
you want to make sure in general, if you don't plan on getting rid of your domain, set them up to auto renew and have a credit card on file and they'll just auto renew. Domains, unless you've got a really specialized domain, domains should typically cost between $10 and $20 a year for the, for the domain to be registered. Sometimes if you register for multiple years in advance, like three or five years in advance, you can get that price right down to about $10, maybe even a little bit less than that. You typically are not going to get a letter like this in the mail asking you to renew your domain. That being said, you want to be you, you want to know where your domain's registered. Log into that account. Make sure that everything you know understand when it renews. Make sure it's set up. I would recommend being on auto renew. Those companies are not going to work through a company like this to send you a letter. And typically, the domain renewal is not going to be close to three hundred dollars for a domain unless you have a very specialized domain. Do not be scammed by these situations. I Again, I had one that came to my company, so nobody's immune to getting these. Um, but, I, and again, I had several clients that sent me text messages with pictures of these in the last week. So this company clearly is sending out a lot of them right now. 99% of the time, it's a scam. Log into your account that you've registered your, your domains with. Make sure. It should say clearly when your renewal is, and it should say whether it's set up to auto renew. Make sure those two things are in place and just throw these things in the garbage because they're just a waste of money. And they're typically 99 out of 100 times they're not valid. And again, the, the first thing that tips me off whenever anybody asks if it's not a company I'm familiar with is when they start asking for over $200 to renew your domain. That's the first red flag that should come up because a domain should never cost that much to renew for a year. So hopefully that helps a couple of you out there listening avoid getting scammed by these people because that's what it is. It's a scam and uh, hopefully that helps. So um, another question that came up regarding domains, though, as part of that was uh, I had a client ask me this week, does having a variety of domains around my company name or maybe the city and state that I'm operating in uh, and then just redirecting those domains to my main website domain, does that help SEO? So let's just say that your company is xyzcorp.com and you want to pick up xyzcitystate. You know, uh, dot com. Like you think that, you know, that you want to make sure you have that domain locked up. I think there's a lot of validity in locking up some domains that are surrounding your domain. I magnet management, my, you know, we spell it out E Y E magnet M G T. I also have it spelled I with an I like iPhone or whatever. I magnet management because I don't want somebody else to have that domain. So there's a lot of validity validity in having other domains, especially if you want to maybe play a little bit of defense and you don't want a competitor to maybe get that domain and then forward it to their website. You may do that. You may just want to lock it up so that nobody can actually grab a domain that's very similar to yours. Um, again, you may want to grab a domain that has includes your city and state or something like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But with regard to the particular question, does it help your SEO? The answer to that, quite frankly, is no, because you actually have to have a website actually attached to the domain that Google can crawl that actually is attached to the SEO. So just having a domain that you're forwarding, um, it's just a redirect. That in and of itself doesn't help your SEO. The only domain that actually has some SEO benefit is the one your website is actually riding on. So if you want to include your city and your state in, in your actual domain that you're using, that potentially can help you if, if you want to do that. I mean, it's going to be a small help, but it may help you with if you want to do that. But just having a domain and redirecting it and not actually having it attached to your website, that in and of itself isn't going to help your SEO. So you may own 40 domains and have them all redirected to your website, but that in and of itself isn't helping your SEO. You're primarily pay, playing defense to keep other people from having those domains if they're relevant to your company. But don't make a mistake of thinking just having those domains and having them redirected is going to be 
a part of your SEO strategy in and of itself. So hopefully that answers that. Uh, it, I have an, a question from Shamal. It says, hey, Patrick, do you think it's still worth it to be with Better Business Bureau and have many have many of your guys? Uh, the Better Business Bureau, a couple different things. One, it's, it's regional, just like Yelp and some other different things out there. Some areas of Better Business Bureau is very relevant. And being part of it is is definitely something that will help your business. Um, some areas it's it's not viewed as being relevant at all. Most places, if you're with the Better Business Bureau, one of the things is you'll get your company listed, and you'll typically be able to list your uh, your company website on their on their local um, Better Business Bureau website. So that's actually going to give you an, a, a, a link, a backlink to your website from a relevant website. We've talked about backlinks a lot on other episodes and how backlinks, relevant backlinks can actually be good for your website SEO. Better Business Bureau would be one of those that would be considered a relevant backlink. So if you have a backlink back to your website from the Better Business Bureau website, that could actually help your SEO. Same thing with if you're a part of any other organization, like we're a networking organization, like, um, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of them. I don't even want to, but there's a lot of them where people get together for networking. And if you're listed there with a backlink to your website, that would be considered a relevant backlink. Um, the Better Business Bureau in and of itself, whether it's beneficial to you or not, depends on the region and the area and whether the Better Business Bureau is viewed as being really legitimate in that area. Some areas it is, some areas it isn't. So I do have clients that are part of the Better Business Bureau, and we always want to make sure that they are they have a backlink on that site to their website. Uh, but I don't necessarily blanket recommend it for everybody because it's really, it depends on the area you're located in. So thanks for that question, Shamal. Um, uh, Jordan, good to see you in here. Um, Billy asks the question, how hard is it to duplicate a web page? Um, uh, some of that, Billy, depends on what platform the website was built on. Let's say that it was built on WordPress, which is kind of, I like to say to a lot of people, WordPress is like the English language of web development. Everybody that's in web development kind of understands WordPress and how it works. So it's, it's very prolific. If you have the proper credentials with uh, WordPress, you can actually duplicate that website and then put it on another platform. It's not very hard to duplicate a, a website. I'm not sure why you might want to duplicate a website uh, unless you want to just save a file in case your website were to get eliminated or something like that. But it's not very difficult to necessarily duplicate a website. You never really want to get in the habit of duplicating another website, though, and just bringing it on live, bringing it, it live, because that would fall potentially, you might not get a lot of SEO benefit out of that if it's an exact duplicate of another site that exists somewhere else. So I'm not sure the nature of why you're asking the question, Billy. As far as duplicating a website, as long as you have the files available to you, you should be able to create a clone of the website. But whether that is beneficial or not depends. Okay, you just clarified multiple domains. So I'm thinking you're playing off the last question I was answering about if you have multiple domains, maybe you just duplicate a bunch of websites and bring them all live. You don't want to probably have a bunch of websites that are exact clones of each other. Now, if you want to create another website and you want to modify the text and modify the wording and the layout and things like that and, and bring that live, I do have some companies that operate two different websites in the same market, but they're different websites. They're not the same website. So essentially they have two hooks in the water uh, from an SEO standpoint versus one, but those websites are, are different. They're not exact duplicates of each other. So hopefully that answers that, that question. Um, you know, uh, so basically again, it, if you have a website attached to a domain, there can be SEO benefits to that, obviously, like any website. But if you just are redirecting the domain, it, it won't have a lot. Of, and I also don't recommend just duplicating your current website and bringing it live. One, you're probably going to have to pay a lot of hosting fees, which typically hosting is going to be anywhere from for good hosting with an SSL certificate, say 20 to $50 maybe for a decent hosting package with a lot with decent speed. So you start duplicating that too many times, you're going to have that monthly fee on top of 
the other uh, stuff. So hopefully that answers that, Billy. Uh, don't recommend just a straight duplication just to have that. Um, uh, so let me see. Uh, Jordan asks, what do you recommend to actually check the website SEO if that's even an option? There's a variety of different programs out there, Jordan, that you can use to check the SEO. When we go in to do an audit for a potential client, we'd like to log into the back of the SEO and see if the different things are filled out. So there are website graders, but some of those are good and some of those are bad. Some of those don't tell the whole story. And some of them are attached to a company that's trying to sell you a service. So there's a little bit of a vested interest in telling you that your website isn't up to par because they want to sell you their solution to bring it up to par. So be careful when you're looking at these website graders. But when we go into the back of a website, we know the different things that we're looking for that are attached to pages, attached to images, things like that. So we can tell if those things have been done or not. Just because a website looks great on the outside and has all the visual appeal doesn't mean that there's any SEO done on the backside. In fact, you could have a website that looks dynamite that has no SEO done to it at all. So, um, you know, but a good, a good, reliable, like uh, digital marketing company or web development company is going to be able to tell you whether there's SEO on the back end of your website or not, because SEO isn't always going to be visible from the front end. And I would say avoid some of the, you know, the, the, website graders that are attached to a company that sells a product or service. There are some out there like Google has a speed test and things like that. But even then you have to be careful that there's, you know, you could even, I, I've actually used the Google speed test and run the Apple website through that. And it didn't, it didn't grade out really well. And that's Apple. So you kind of look at it and say, okay, well, if they were going to have their website done, Apple certainly would have it done properly. And even Google was giving a couple negative marks to them. So you can't look at it like if your website shows some negative marks, that that's necessarily something wrong with it. You have to look at it like what specifically are they saying you're missing and things like that. And then also having somebody look at the back end of your website, then it becomes really apparent whether the SEO is done or not. Um, so uh, Ron says, I recommend AdWords, like you've said. Yeah, AdWords is a, a fast way to, you know, come up really high on searches because you're paying for it. But some people, you know, don't have the money to do that. So they, they utilize other means and they want to come up organically. And there's nothing wrong with that. But obviously, as Ronnie said, you know, you can you can do AdWords. Marcelo said, we had a conversation during Tinder about, about emotional sales. I think it'd be very interesting, important topic, maybe for a different Monday. Yeah, I'd love to go into that. We could maybe even touch base, Marcelo, and I could get a little bit of insight into exactly what direction you want to go. I'd love to jump into that. Um, Steve Williams said, I use a structured data markup code generator for a few of my pages on a Wix site, and it seemed to help a lot. Yeah, I mean, anything that can help tell you what you're missing on your page so that you can correct that is going to help. There's a lot of, you know, tutorials on some of these things like Wix or whatever that can walk you through the process. What it doesn't necessarily tell you is what keywords you want to focus in on and things like that. Like a good example might be um, one of the things, you know, obviously we do a lot of work with people in the window film industry and a lot of people want to have their website optimized for things like residential window film, which is, which is, great, you know, to a certain extent, if that, if you also have some other things, but the reality is most customers aren't typing into Google residential window film. That's not what they type into Google when they're searching for things. A lot of times they'd search something like home window tint or window tint for home windows or, uh, you know, things like that. So you have to do your SEO. Also, it's important to have all the elements filled out, but it's also important to understand what you're optimizing your web page for. Because if you optimize it for things that nobody's searching for, it may go through a website grader and show you got great marks on a website grader because all the boxes are checked, but it's optimized for search terms that nobody's searching for. So that's where sometimes just a blanket gr website grader or whatever doesn't tell you the whole story because it could be optimized and pointed at the wrong target and your website's not going to get good traction. And you're like, why? I, like all the SEO checks out but you're, uh, you've optimized it for something nobody's searching for. So um, got a lot of questions today. Thank you guys for being so active on a Monday morning. Uh, 
you know, one of the things, um, you know, uh, uh, Ronnie says, own your site. I actually have a question uh, here that kind of leads to this, but I'm going to really quickly, briefly touch on it because Ronnie brought this question up. Absolutely. It's important that you own your own website. There's, you know, you you don't want to build your house on somebody else's real estate. And, and uh, there's actually a question and I'll, I'll jump into it. I'll go a couple minutes behind. But Ronnie, you hit it right on the head. The companies, may, uh, David asked, do companies make websites just to say who's the best company to pick? And they pull themselves to the top of the list. Yeah, I mean, there's companies that do a lot of different things that, you know, could be considered, you know, unscrupulous or whatever. But, you know, if a company creates a website essentially to create a top 10 list and then put themselves at the top of the list, I mean, it may get them some SEO benefit if if, they, if it's optimized a certain way. And, uh, you know, you can question whether that's a great use of their time or use of their resources or, or you know, uh, maybe an ethical way to do it. But there are companies that try to game the system, if you will. And that may be one of the ways they do it. Uh, do I recommend that to my clients? No, I don't. I, I tend to try to recommend things that are, a, you know, good, solid, sound practices that you're not going to have to maybe make apologies for. In that situation, if somebody found out that your company created a page to say the top 10 that do this thing and put themselves at the top of the list, I don't want to as a marketing person, or I wouldn't want to as a business owner answer the question as to why I did that. And it kind of looks a little bit shady and it looks at no, no offense to uh, Jordan, who's in here, whose nickname is shady. It looks a little unethical if somebody were to catch you in that. And I tend to not want to be involved with anything myself or with my clients that would fall into that category. So because Ron said that, um, the very next question actually addresses this. I'm going to answer this because I still got time. I may go a couple minutes long, but hopefully you guys will forgive me for that. So this question is, I'm beginning to work with a company that offers um, a page on their website that can serve as my website as they already have good SEO. Should I do this or keep my own site? So I think it goes right down the alley that you're talking about, uh, Ronnie. And my answer to that is I would keep your own site and make your website relevant. If they're offering to give you a page on their website and give you a listing and maybe even a link out to your website, that could be great. It actually would provide potentially a backlink to your website that can help the SEO on your website. And also that page on their website can help you get leads as well. So there's nothing wrong with that, particularly having a page on their website, but getting rid of your own website and completely relying on the page on that website, I would not recommend. And here are a couple of different reasons why. One, you don't own that real estate. You've basically spent time, you, you basically allowed your house to be built, your house, i.e. your website, your web presence to be built on borrowed real estate. Now that's fine when the relationship is good, but in many of these situations, if the relationship were to change or you were to not do business with that company anymore, what happens to all that work, that SEO, that time that your website has been, that that page has been uh, registered and crawled with Google, if that all of a sudden goes away, you can find yourself all, all of a sudden back at square one. Uh, and that's only part of the story. So You've, you've built your house, you've put your effort, you've done all that on rented real estate, which you can't control in the future. So that would be one reason I wouldn't necessarily completely you know, uh, eliminate my current website and rely completely on that. The second thing, and I hate to say this, and uh, you know, I won't even mention, we, we do business with a lot of industries. And um, I, I will say that there's a situation I've seen where you know, let's say that you're working with a company and everything's great and they give you a page on their website and it's generating leads and all that's working terrifically. And uh, but then there's a falling out and you don't want to work with that company anymore. That company still has that page and they still have that SEO and they still have that time on Google where it's been crawled. There's nothing that stops that company from looking for another partner in your market and just tweaking that website a little bit. And now they're promoting that other company in your market. So you've actually allowed that, that 
page, if you will, to build credibility in your market and build SEO value in your market. And if you ever walk away from that company, that company can turn on another company with that same page and that same SEO, just change the company information that's included there. And now another company is getting all the benefit maybe that you've spent time and years to, to build, if you will. So, uh, you know, again, you can argue about whether that's ethical or not. Again, we work with a lot of different industries and I can tell you that I've seen situations where, you know, it's great for the company that owns that website because they're building SEO everywhere and they're getting a lot of traffic. And they also have the ability to potentially use that as a carrot to sell. Like, let's say they lose their business with you. They lose their relationship with you. They can go to four other people in your market and say, hey, we already are getting 100 hits a day to this page in your market. Are you interested in coming on board as a partner? Because we're already getting traffic for this area. We could easily redirect it to you, send those leads to you, and there's really not anything you can do about it because, again, that that's on their website. They own that website. They can do whatever they want with it. So for those reasons, I would say I caution anybody, no matter what business you're in, no matter what, to put all your eggs into a situation that's on somebody else's real estate because you can't control that. That goes for social media, too. I've said this in this group before. Don't put all your don't rely completely on the fact that you built all these likes on Instagram or all these uh, people that follow your page on Facebook because anything can happen. Facebook could go away. They could change how they do things. Same thing with Instagram. And if you put all your eggs in those baskets, you built your castle on rented real estate that can change. I would use those rented real estate options to drive people back to your website, which you own. I would try to collect leads on your website, which you own. So if a company wants to give you a page on their website because you're partnered with them, that's great. But I would want that website to have a, a, a link back to my website because I would want to create a situation that my website is going to benefit. That's something I own. All those other things, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, LinkedIn, uh, another company's website, those are all rented real estate. Can you use them successfully? Absolutely. Should you rely on them and put your eggs in those baskets at the at the at the option of getting rid of your personal website? I would recommend strongly against doing that. So hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, we're a little bit over, but that was a great question from uh, it was a great comment from Ronnie, and it was a great question that came in. So I wanted to make sure. We spent adequate time because I do have people that ask me questions in and around that topic. And I want to make sure you understand why, not just what my answer is, but why my answer is that. And 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 hopefully this uh, hopefully you benefited from that. So with that, we're a couple minutes late. I apologize for that. I really try to keep it tight at 30 minutes for all of you so that you can get on with your Monday and get going. But thank you for tuning into Marketing Mondays. Again, today, it's March 28th. We're heading into April. Hopefully, you guys have a terrific week. Hopefully, you can implement any advice I've given to help benefit your business. If, if you uh, have any questions, you can always send them to me at patrick at imagnetmgt.com, and we'll get them into the next episode if we didn't get to them today. I didn't see any questions that came in that we didn't get to today, but uh, if, if you have a question, send it to me. We'll make sure it gets in a future episode. And again, thank you so much for your time. Hopefully you guys have a terrific week. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Take care. Bye.